idea, Dan, that it's senior night here at home, and if you win this game, you are in the playoffs for the first time in, I think, 15-plus years. So a lot of emotional uh, folks down on the field tonight as we see the flaming flashes and all the seniors from the various organizations within the school system. A really, really good thing that home teams do for a senior night. So a big thing here, lots of emotion and um, – can't wait for the game to get started here and we'll see how the Lions react against these 40 Jackrabbits with the playoffs in the balance. And Jerry and Brent, uh, Brent, it's nice to have you back in the booth as Steve is uh, once again unavailable tonight, but we're glad that you're back with us looking at this game. What do you hope to see out of the Greenville Lions to, to guarantee or to assure that win that is so badly wanted tonight by the coaches, by the players? What are you hoping to see as the game unfolds? Well, just like any game, the game is won in the trenches. Right. So we have to play good fundamental football on defense and offense. Don't turn the ball over. Uh, don't. Also, ladies and gentlemen, both sides of the stand. There is a concession stand. If you need something cool or warm to drink, make your way down there. Good luck with the
The Forney Jackrabbits have won the ball. They have deferred to the second half. Greenville Lions will start the court, start the game with the ball. Ladies, Ladies and gentlemen, at this, at this time I ask that you stand as the, as the colors of the United States of America are presented, are presented at mid-build by our Naval Junior ROTC of Greenville, of Greenville High School. Tonight, Tonight singing, the, singing the, national the National Anthem is being performed by the Encore Choir under the direction of Mr. Scott Service. Flashes and their parents are walking off of the victory line, and the players are ready to take the field. A big game for the Lions. Uh, wow, this this has been a season full of big games, Jerry. But this one, where you can qualify, it's been a while since the Greenville Lions have played a meaningful game this late in the season. It really has. It really has. And generally speaking, what will happen is the first couple of series. Your, uh, your adrenaline will take over. So I'm sure the coaches, especially if there are going to be any passing attempts or anything like that, the coaches will tell everybody, okay, get your job done on each play, let the adrenaline flow, but keep it under control because you want to come out really strong in a game like this, set the tone, and then hopefully later on you put it on cruise control and these guys really get the reward they've been looking for. Some of these guys, um, you know, they've been playing football since Pee Wee, so they can get to a point where they, uh, in high, their high school career, to make the playoffs. That is the pinnacle for any sport. That's right, and they have an opportunity tonight to make that happen. I'm sure uh, there are some anxious players down there on the field as the game has gotten underway. Kickoff is short. Fielded by number 11, Sean Brown, at the 30, and a very short return to the 33. We'll have the Lions with a, a good starting spot. We'll try to we'll try to mention all of these seniors and all the different areas that they're participating as we go on tonight. Hopefully, we can get that done. Yeah, 
Yeah, Dan, I, you know, for the, all those out there who've done high school sports before, uh, there are so many things that go into varsity and junior varsity sports, but the band practices before school and after school, the cheerleaders, all of those things that go into supporting the on-field activities, man, there's a lot of seniors to be proud of. Here on first down, it's a handoff to Lester Turner to get things started. Turner met at the line of scrimmage. It'll give him forward progress as he is pushed backwards, met by a few Jackrabbits uh, teaming up to push Lester backwards. Brings up a second down and 10 to go. Lions with four wide receivers in the game, and now Denson is going to line up flanking Stevens to the right with Lester Turner to the left. Two running backs in the game, a low snap picked up by Stevens, handed to Denson. Denson looking for the sideline, makes his way out for a first down, and he gets 12 yards on his first sweep of the night. And Denson turns on the speed. They gotta be really scared. Anybody on film that sees that guy turn that corner, and if he gets a seam and squirts through it, there's nobody in this district that will catch it. Opening drive of the game, no score on the board. Lions with a first down, marked down at their own 45. Lester Turner, the lone running back now, four wide receivers in the game. Lester Turner gets the handoff, looking off tackle to the left side, pushes forward for a nice gain of four yards on first down. Okay, guys, we had penetration by one of the Jackrabbits into the backfield, and what did Lester Turner do? He sidestepped the mm -hmm. guy and got a four-yard gain. Just really talented runner. And the countdown continues to his 1,000-yard season. I'm sure Britton will let us know when he gets there. Second down, six to go for the Lions. Two running backs, it's Denson and Turner. Handoff to Denson, he's trying to go back the other way. Wow. Brandon Stevens sees him and leads the way with a block. So first down and more. He's, he's broken away to the 20, to the 10. Touchdown, wow. Denson, to get this game started off in a big way. And how do you like Brandon Stevens when the play fell apart and Denson looked like he was gonna be tackled in the backfield. He does a U-turn and who's the lead blocker? Brandon Stevens. Brandon Stevens. Yes, and he did an excellent job through the one block that broke him free. The wide receivers, a nice job keeping their blocks legal all the way down the field and Denson dances into the end zone. For the first score of the game, here's Zach Allen with the extra point. It's up and it is good. So Zach Allen, who struggled a bit with the wind and the rain last week, puts this one right through the uprights. And Jerry, I know I, to, to us they looked like they were in. I think he kept pulling them to the left last week, and they were just outside those uprights. But this one's straight through. Seemed to be uh, maybe even a little bit of wind, but uh, the ball kept shooting to the left. But Allen is true tonight as he's been virtually all season, and the Greenville Lions are up 7 to nothing with more than 10 minutes left to go in the first quarter. First time for a while that the Lions have had a nice quick strike on offense, and uh, they'd like to put this one to bed early tonight, I'm sure, and let uh, a lot of those seniors get on the field, maybe some who don't play all as much, and uh, get their time tonight. And Dan, as you said earlier, and we were talking, there's a lot of emotion on the field, but here for this kickoff, most all, with the exception of maybe the offensive line that just came off the field, most all the Lions are arm in arm rocking back and forth on the sideline for this kickoff. It's a kickoff to the 10 yard line fielded by number 24, Dylan Amonston, and he is going to be brought down before the 20, right around the 18. And that's Davion Wallace making a long run on the far side. Outstanding pursuit by the Lions on the kickoff. And the band and the flaming flashes are already into it tonight. <laughs> they are rocking and rolling there in the stands. First down, 10 to go for the Jackrabbits ball on their 0-19. And this uh, defense has been excellent all season long. I'm looking for a few takeaways tonight, uh, causing problems for these Jackrabbits yeah, all night long. The, the Jackrabbits better watch out for... Uh, Moment and Abrego on the outside because those guys along with the rest of their teammates are hunting jackrabbits tonight. Just a little snack for a lion, but we'll, there we go. they're going to love it. Pass incomplete over the head of the intended receiver, number 18, Aaron Mount, for a bubble screen type play, a little bit high and over the head. Brings up a second down for the jackrabbits as they trail seven to nothing. And 
they have two wide receivers in the game, a fullback and a halfback. Now a receiver goes in motion. It's a fake toss and a handoff to the fullback who finds a hole up the middle to the secondary. And the only saving grace is that he's not as fast as our safeties, and they tackle him right at midfield, but that's a big first down for the Jackrabbits. That's his fullback. I see the right time. Yeah, he made his way right through there. Dan, they came out in, for those out there that follow football, in an offset eye, and the fake to the wide pitch came back to the middle and that was a trap block by the interior lineman and that was executed quite well. There was a large hole right in the middle. Sure was. First and 10 for the Jackrabbits at their own 49 now and Michael Surface gets a hold of this running back and is going to push him backwards. He's going to get forward progress to the line of scrimmage but that was a nice snack for Surface. And that looked like Beltaton also back there helping uh, Surface complete that tackle. So a couple of lines in the backfield that time. Good pursuit there by the defense and a nice tackling. Second and ten. Lions with the seven to nothing lead here early in the game. Jackrabbits first offensive possession. Handoff up the middle and a gain of perhaps two on the play. Carry by number 13. Dalbert Nishongagong. That's the way we're going to pronounce this name. Absolutely. Let me spell it for you, Jerry, while they are huddling. Right. N-D-Z-I-S-H-A-N-G-O-N-G. -G. Wow, there you go. I'm Nish just going to say the tackle was made by Tucker Bowman. Nishongagong. That's Nishongagong. The, this is how I was told to pronounce that, so we will do that. And that brings up third and eight for the 40 Jackrabbits. Campbell Anderson, the quarterback in the... Shotgun, a little bit high on the snap, but it's handled. Pass is nearly intercepted as it went right through the hands of the intended receiver, Riley McMurrin. And uh, that looks like Anderson or Davis over there who nearly had the first interception of the game. Brings up a fourth down and eight for the Jackrabbits. And let's see what they do as they are right near midfield. I think that was, you're right, that was Tyrekus Davis looking to capitalize and further amplify his performance from last week. They are going to punt it as they send out the punt team. At least they are making the Lions think so. Snap is high but handled. Rugby style punt for number eight, Colby Ortega. It's going to go out of bounds and allow no return for the Lions, but uh, the Lions defense does their job after a nice run up the middle by the fullback gets the Jackrabbits to midfield. They force a punt. And about a 26-yard punt, but it was uh, effective. There was no return, so the Lions will start at the 25-yard line there. The Lions take the field now with a 7-0 lead and 8 minutes 22 seconds left in the first quarter. Ball's marked at their 25. 75 yards to go to pay dirt and they start with two running backs flanking Stevens to either side The handoff goes to Denson Denson once again bounces it from the right to the left and spins away from a tackler gets the first down and Another yard they're going to give him around 11 on that run and again tough running there Denson Denson might go five six five seven and maybe 160 pounds just looking from here, but man, he is, he's a strong runner. Really good job there of fighting for some extra yards and holding on to the ball. Greenville, Greenville keeping the ball moving. <clears throat> now Denson goes out to a wide receiver spot. Low snap once again handled by Stevens. Pass out quickly to number 10, Caleb Johnson. is complete. However, Johnson had to die for that, only able to pick up two on the reception, not able to keep his feet under him. And Brandon led him just a hair farther than he could stretch. I think if that snap is up a little yes. higher, right into Steven's hands, he's got a better motion on that. Yeah, the timing on that play started off a little, little slow. Second and eight, snap is back. Stevens pulls this one away from Davis and has to keep it. Fakes a pump throw and is tackled for a loss. A yard back of the original line of scrimmage brings up a third down and 11 here. Yeah, I'm not sure what happened there. I don't know if that was a play call. We've seen that work a couple of times in the last few weeks where it looks like he's running, but he doesn't get to the line of scrimmage. He pulls up then and dumps it off, but there, again, rolling to the left for a right-handed quarterback is very, very difficult to do. Jack Rabbit's just had that one well covered all the way. Not necessarily a bad read by Stevens, just uh, Jack Rabbit's 
all over the place. Now Stevens rolling out to his right, looking downfield, throws the ball intended for Sean Brown, nearly picked off by the Jackrabbits, but it falls incomplete. And that's a quick three and out for the Lions as the punting team comes on the field. Yeah, as Brandon rolled to the near side and got outside near the numbers, there was good coverage down the field by the 40 defense, so not a lot of places to go there. So hopefully Allen can get one up in the air and uh, don't know that there's much of any wind tonight. So if he can get, get a spiral out of it, it might sail a little bit. And the Jackrabbits have nobody deep to cover this punt. They're going to let it bounce and roll, and it bounces at the 35 and takes a big roll for the Lions. Now inside the 20, and it's going to be down right at the 15-yard line. So we'll be right back and see what the Jackrabbits can do to, with that. You're listening to Lions Football on Easy Rock 105.9 KGBL. 46-yard punt. Thank you, sir. A quick one. Who was the uh, – I couldn't get the number on the long run of the, the 40, the fullback. Oh, it was the fullback. Um, wait till they come on the field. Yeah, we'll give you a number. Was it? Steven, uh, Maybe. Welcome back. Lions football here. Lions with a 7 0 lead have to punt the ball away to the Jackrabbits, and now they've got it at their own 15. Handoff for the Jackrabbits to number 13, the Shang Shang again. And he has a good pickup at this time of four yards as he gets a couple of those big linemen behind him, and they push him forward. Clock continues to run now at 6 minutes and 15 seconds in the first quarter. This is the second offensive opportunity for the Jackrabbits. The Lions score on their first one and have to punt it away on a three and out after a big loss on a play. A sack from Brandon Stevens pushes them back. Eight in the, eight in the box for the Lion defense. And it's another handoff. They try to go right up the middle, but they are met there by Tucker Moman. Wow. That was a tackle with authority, was it? Tucker not? Moman was right there, and he is jacked up about that tackle. And he should be. It forces a quick third down as he met him right at the line of scrimmage. And Tucker is on the field displaying emotion that he's famous for or well-known for this team. I think there's the spiritual leader of this team, especially he and Abrego on defense. So to see him amplify that up, that's a good sign for the Green Alliance. And Dartavian Wilkerson comes into the game on defense now as the Jackrabbits face a third and five from their own 20. Anderson takes the snap. He's looking to pass, looking downfield. Covered well. The Lions read it, and it's an interception. Wow. Interception by Tyrekus, Tyrekus Davis. Davis, of course. And, Dan, did you see how he went up? He had inside position on the receiver. Outstanding. Went up and took the ball out of the air. That's, that's a defensive play right there that should be considered for a very uh, significant uh, district honor, especially given his performance last week. That's a great play there. And that was just excellent coverage. He knew where the receiver was. He watched the ball all the way in. And that was not a bad pass at all. No, that young man may be playing uh, on Saturday fairly soon. Greenville Lions deep offense back on the field now, and they hand it off to Turner. Up the middle, and Turner pushes forward a gain of, it looks like, seven here on this first down run. He just bowled over some jackrabbits. Mr. Turner. A very nice run and a, an exciting opportunity for the Lions here with the takeaway interception. No return on that interception as he was uh, falling to the ground and tackled by the wide receiver. Second down and four here. Stevens quickly out to Denson. And Denson has the first down and is pushed out of bounds right after that. Looks like another gain of about eight there on the play for Mr. Denson. And Wow, I, I think I've had vehicles that would not accelerate that fast before. I mean, the guy gets downfield, and man, once he gets, once he pushes, pushes, pushes on the gas pedal, that is, man, you, you've got to be close, or you've just been left in the dust. And a nice quick pass by Stevens on that play, uh, even with a missed block by the wide receiver, he had a big score. Now we have a handoff to Turner. Off tackle to the right, he breaks it to the outside, down the sideline, 20-10, touchdown. Lester Turner puts his first touchdown of the night on the board. And that puts Lester Turner for the year over 1,000 yards, according to Brent Stanley.
that man recently. Thank you for that, and thank you, Lester Turner. What an amazing season he has had. A great running back in that time. It uh, doesn't have to show his power so much as his finesse and speed as he bounces it to the outside and runs down, scampers down the sideline to the end zone. And Zach Allen takes on the extra point for a 14-0 lead for your Greenville Lions. We'll be right back. You'll listen to Lions football on Easy Rock 105.9 and AM 1400 KGBL. Starting to feel a little something <laughs> here. <laughs> and it's not my lower back either. <laughs> <laughs> well, Tell, hey, how far was the run? 50? Uh, 51 yards, every 49. Okay. Uh, you want to say this on the air? Whatever you're going to tell us. <laughs> oh, no, I was going to ask you something. Okay. Uh, let's see here. Okay, so that was 39. 426. Welcome back to Lions Football, where your Greenville Lions have a 14-0 lead quickly here in the first quarter. Four minutes, 26 seconds left. And the result of the drive after the Tyreekus Davis interception is a 51-yard touchdown run by... 41-yard touchdown run by Lester Turner to get the Lions up by two touchdowns. Well, Brent, just tell, tell me how long was that run? I got it wrong twice. It was twice. 41. I, I told you wrong. Okay, there we go. He's got 51 yards. <laughs> 51 yards on the night already. So that puts him over the 1,000-yard mark, and that's a great season no matter where you're playing. I'm just so excited. Kickoff for the Lions, fielded by the Jackrabbits at the 5. And he is hit hard. Met and dropped at the 23. 23, Garrett Phillips in there to make that tackle for the Lions. And now the Jackrabbits offense comes back onto the field with four minutes, 19 seconds left in the first quarter, and they're already down a couple scores, and this has been the Jackrabbits' problem all season. Just looking at their stats and not watching their game is uh, pr production on offense. So now they come out with two wide receivers, and an I formation in the backfield. Hand off to the running back. And there is not a lot of room there. Even with the fullback blocking, he's brought down right at the line of scrimmage. And then I believe that was for the Lions number 74. And I don't have I don't I don't know that I have a name for him, but boy, he was in the backfield there. And I wanna I wanna say something about Lester Turner's accomplishment. He is, he is not a Denson that runs to the outside. Guys, a huge percentage of that 1,000 yards came between the tackles, and I'll think, yes. I think Lester Turner would be the first to tell you the credit goes to the Greenville Lion offensive line. Indeed it does, and John Richard Washington for the Jackrabbits with one yard on that last play brings up a second and nine. Anderson rolling out to his left, looking downfield. Has a man open, but passes it too far and out of bounds. That was intended for Zarek Waters and then brings up a third and nine quickly for the Jackrabbits. Campbell Anderson, a little off the money on that one. He's a senior quarterback. He's, on a, the, uh, he's a right-handed quarterback and rolling mm -hmm. to the left, and normally that is a better setup, but that one floated just a little bit on him and, and ended up over on the white line out of, out of bounds where the receiver couldn't get to it. Anderson seems to have a pretty good arm when he goes deep, but uh, we'll see if he gets on track here later in the game. Third and nine for the Jackrabbits. Ball at their own 24. Anderson looking to pass. Now he's flushed out of the pocket, and the ball comes up short. Greenville Lions homing in on that one, so he's lucky that he didn't throw another pick. Jacoby Allen had his eyes set on that ball. And he and Michael Surface, uh, pardon me, Michael Surface was one of the Lions in the backfield. And I can't make out the number of that other Lion defender. It might have been, I believe that was Corey Goodell in the backfield for the Lions as Darfabian Wilkerson come in, comes in on defense. Uh, looks like he's probably going to play a slot receiver defender on the far side. A late player making his way onto the field for the Jackrabbits in the Lions have Caleb Johnson back deep to receive this punt. Play clock down to five, and they have a fourth and nine here. High snap fielded by the punter. It gets away and it bounces at the 45, fielded by Johnson at the 35. He goes backwards and is wrapped up by two Jackrabbits. They're going to spot this one at the 32. And Caleb made a good decision that time because who knows how far that ball would have rolled. Yes, he did. He fielded it on one hop and... Uh, 
The Jackrabbits got to him quickly, but that's all right. It's still decent field position for the Lions, and he did a good job just hanging on to the ball and then getting down to the ground, not letting them strip the ball away. Three minutes, 13 seconds left in the first quarter. Greenville Lions offense comes onto the field with a two-touchdown lead, 14 to nothing. So far, Denson and Turner have done all the work. Some nice runs by both running backs. Now we see Denson coming in motion across the field. He gets the handoff, goes off tackle to the left, now bounces it back to the right, gets 10 yards, and is brought down right at the first down marker. We'll see if they give him the first down or they call it just a little short. Denson doing a great job tonight of uh, switching direction and changing direction when the uh, first option is not there. He's picked up a lot of yards after first contact already. It is a first down for the Lions. Ball now at their own 43. Lester Turner in the backfield, and we have an H-back blocker in as well. Three wide receivers on the field. Looks like Brown, Johnson, and Denson. Hand off to Lester Turner. This time, Lester Turner gets to gets a one-yard carry and is wrapped up by number four for the Jack Rabbits, Anusium, and he is forced out of bounds. Second down and nine for the Lions. And several of the Jackrabbits easing toward the line of scrimmage there just before the snap of the ball to basically form a blitz and there was really not any uh, not any daylight in there to find a hole and scamper through it. Nine yards to go here for the Lions. They have four wide receivers in the game. Three out to the left and Stevens on a low snap bobbles it and just falls on the ball to keep possession and that's going to probably bring up another punt for the Lions as he loses about five yards on that play. And a lesser quarterback may have tried to pick that up and make a play out of it, but at this point, Stevens, very smart. Brings up brings up third down, I'm third, sorry. Yeah, no, that's fine, it's 13 to, uh, 14 to nothing. You wanna just fall on the ball exactly like he did. Yeah. Not, not try to make some play here this early on in the first quarter. Now, Jerry, we remember last week we had some problems, both teams really, the Wildcats and Lions with low snaps. This week it looks like a little more of the same, although the weather conditions are better. Now we have a good snap. Wow. Fielded by Stevens, and he rolls out to his left. Hines Denson complete, and now Denson doing his own thing. is getting away. He's got one man to beat to the outside. Picks up a block, and dives through the end zone. He's in. Touchdown, Miles Denson. Touchdown. And that was a spectacular play. I wish you could have seen it in person. Folks, if you're in Greenville and you have juice, watch next week the replay of this game. That play is a highlight reel. He made five or six would-be tacklers miss. And what a play after a catch, the individual effort. And don't forget about the blockers that came downfield to help him. That's just an outstanding. That's worth the price of admission right there. Jerry, he caught that ball on the numbers on the left side of the field. Ends up diving into the end zone at the right, right pylon. Corner. <laughs> he covered a lot of ground for that touchdown. And he was not going to be, not de be denied the end zone there. Zach Allen scores the extra point and the Greenville Lions up big in the first quarter, 21 to nothing. We'll be right back and see how the Jackrabbits respond here on Easy Rock, 105.9 and AM 1400 KGVL. Welcome back to Greenville Lions football. An excellent throw and catch from Stevens to Denson, which should have netted around 12 yards. Ends up in a touchdown for Miles Denson as he works his magic all the way across the field, breaking all kinds of tackles, and is, puts the third touchdown on the board for the Lions, making it 21 to nothing. So it was a 58, 58 yard because it was at the 42. And so Brandon Stevens would deeply appreciate that. That really yes. boosts his passing. <laughs> Could have been eight yards of passing yards, but we'll make it 58. Kickoff is away, fielded by the Jackrabbits at the five. Gets a block and makes his way out to the sideline, and now is pushed out of bounds past the 30. It looks like they'll give him right around the 29 here. So the 20 Jackrabbits start, excuse me, at their own 29. Down 21 to nothing. This all in the first quarter, as there's still a minute 12 left on the clock here. And this is Forney's best starting position of the night. And in the first three drives, they have yet to have the ball clock time for more than two minutes. Wow. 
I believe they picked up only one first down. They're 0 for 3 on third down so far with an interception as well. Anderson takes the snap, rolls out to his left after a fake, and is met by Jeremiah Abrego. Munch, 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 the snack of a little jackrabbit there for Big Abrego in his first sack of the night. Dan, that was a 9 or 10 yard loss, so further uh, really putting Forney in a hole here. They, they don't have, besides the big run by the fullback uh, here in the first quarter, they really don't have a lot of offense. And again, they haven't kept the ball more than a minute and 53 seconds the first three times they've had the ball as the clock rolls down to about 30 seconds left here with all first quarter about to come to an end and the Greenville Lions up 21 to nothing. Campbell Anderson has the eye formation behind him. It's a pitch to the tailback. Tailback uh, gets away from the first tackler and then is met by a pride of Lions who bring him down behind the line of scrimmage for a loss of two more. A third and very long for the Jackrabbits here as the first quarter clock runs down to 10 seconds, I doubt that they'll snap the ball before we get the whistle. And the pursuit of the Greenville Lion defense makes the 40 offense look quite porous. Boy, there were there were a number of men in red and black in the backfield that time. As Tucker Moman starts that little dance that he's got there for the enthusiasm and a lot of things going on down the field for the Lions. Got everything going right so far and everybody's hitting on all cylinders. If you are not here and you're in Greenville, you should get out here because it looks like there just may be a celebration at the end of tonight. And we're at the end of the first quarter. We'll take a quick break and be right back with the second quarter. Jackrabbits ball third and 18 here on Easy Rock 105.9 and AM 1400 KGVL. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Number 18 is not even listed as a running back. Listed as a wide receiver. I know they haven't had their leading rushers really on the field yet. I don't think. And I'm looking for 70. Wait a minute. Yeah, 74 for Greenville. It must be a J. Leal up. Was it Leal was last week? Leal was what number? Was 55? I thought it was 74. Was it 74? Okay, this game's going to be 42 to 7. Second quarter of action set to begin here on Easy Rock 105.9 KGVL. And we have a 21 to nothing lead for your Greenville Lions over the Forney Jackrabbits. And the Jackrabbits have a third and 18 at their own 21 to begin this quarter. Looks like the Lions may be about to get the ball back. And they have been scoring machine tonight. Jackrabbits with three wide receivers all out to the wide side. It's a fake pitch and a pass out is complete to number one, Zarek Waters. But Waters with a pickup of only three on the play is nowhere near the first down. It's going to be a fourth down and very long, about 15 yards to go for the first. I'm going to suppose that, yes, indeed, the punting unit comes on the field for the Jackrabbits. Yeah, taking nothing away from the Greenville defense, but Forney seems to really be struggling the offense, which I think is probably a continuation, as you mentioned earlier, uh, throughout the season uh, into tonight because the leading rusher after uh, eight games only has 350 yards. That's true, and their second leading rusher is the quarterback, although we have not seen Campbell Anderson take off yet tonight. Punt is away, it bounces at the 40, and Tyrekus Davis fields it near the 30, makes a tackler miss, and now has some room up the middle. Dances away from another one, is now at the 45, across midfield, down near the 40. They're going to mark him at the 41 of the Jackrabbits here. A nice return by Tyrekus Davis, who of course had the return for a touchdown last week on an onside kick. Yeah, almost 30 yards, or right around 30 yards, and gives the Lions starting field position in uh, at the 41 of Forney. So again, the Lions scored three touchdowns in the first quarter, and they're poised in very good field position here at the start of the second quarter. Yes, already in Jackrabbits territory at the 41, they come out with well, four wide receivers on the field, three bunched to the short side, one to the wide side. And now Denson comes in motion. No, that's uh, Caleb Johnson comes in motion, and he gets the handoff on the sweep. And Johnson gets a nice gain of about five yards before a shoestring tackle brings him down. And his first carry of the game is a nice one for the Lions and keeps the ball moving. Clock keeps ticking down to 10.35 in the first half. 
Lions a big lead, 21 to nothing, and they're looking to add to it. Spread formation now, four wide receivers, two on each side. Lester Turner in the backfield. Handoff is fake to Turner, and Stevens keeps it up the middle. Gets the first down and a lot more before he decides to slide down and just uh, take it easy there. Ball spotted at the 22. A brilliant run by Brandon Stevens. And then a nice job saving himself some pain as he just uh, fakes the slide. The yards for the Greenville offense really starting to pile up now. As, uh, as offensively, they really stretch their muscles here and stretch their legs and and really get into a very nice rhythm. Rhythm, and this is the type, the time of the season you really want to get in those good rhythms, Dan. Late, late, just before you possibly get to the playoffs. Sure. Hand off to Turner up the middle, makes a man miss as he usually does, and he gets around four yards on the carry. And uh, second down, round seven to go. Big Sam Martin. Brett Baldwin up there on the uh, offensive line. We'll try to call some more names of these uh, unsung heroes up front tonight doing an outstanding job against this horny defense. Second and seven here for the Lions. Three wide receivers in the game. Movement up front by the Jackrabbits, and it's a handoff to Turner. And Turner, who was wrapped up at the line of scrimmage, shakes away from the tackler and is able to gain, looks like, three more yards, uh, hard yards there. And brings up a third down and short, uh, short four. We'll call that. And they have the ball at the 40 16. So you may wonder if this is four down territory. Perhaps not with a three touchdown lead. We'll see what coach decides to do here as they have the third and four. Stevens under pressure big time and is going to be brought down. The Jackrabbits that time. Swarm and the three Jackrabbits met him as soon as he turned away from the fake turn uh, handoff, much like uh, Abrego met Anderson in the Jackrabbits last drive. Yeah, I think so. And, and at this point, I think with, be, with it being fourth down, you want to maybe see if Allen, uh, maybe you stre let Allen stretch his leg literally here and try a long field goal, or we'll see what the coaches decide to do. The play clock had just started, so there's over 20 seconds on the play clock. But I would imagine, well, it actually looks like the offense is still on the field then. So fourth down, fourth down with the 21-point lead, they're going to go ahead and try to get some of this uh, situational experience in case you incur this later on in the season. Fourth and 17, it's a bubble screen, and it's a fake. Uh, oh, my goodness. I, I'll just have to tell you what happened. Uh, Brandon Stevens threw a bubble screen pass backwards to Josh Luna, number five. Luna catches the ball and finds Miles Denson, Denson wide open over the middle. Denson catches it at the one yard line and walks into the end zone for a touchdown. Wow. Now that's why they wanted to run the fourth and 17 that's why, why. That's why Allen did not come onto the field and maybe kick a very, for him, a 40 plus yard field goal. And for a high school kicker, that's good. And for that, that's something he is very capable of making. So instead of doing that, they come out with a little, as you say, trickeration, yes. and it is successful. With seven minutes and 47 seconds left in the first half of a game that would clinch a playoff berth, the Greenville Lions are up 28 to nothing. Very sneaky getting Josh Luna in there at wide receiver to throw that touchdown pass. Before this kickoff, let's read off the name of some of these Lions senior football players. Number two, Cameron Maps. Number six, Darius Ford. Number eight, Zach Allen. Number nine, Tyreekus Davis. Number 14, Brian Gilstrap. Number 15, Dartavian Wilkerson. Number 19, Lance Morrison. 24, Jasper Jensen. Number 25, Jacoby Allen. Number 30, Corey Godu. Number 33, Lester Turner. Number 44, Tucker Moman. Number 47, Justin Limon. Number 50, Cade Pryor. Number 52, Devoya Washington. Number 63, Gerardo Ugalde. Number 64, Steve Lewis. Number 67, Chris Reyna. Number 76, Brett Baldwin. 79, Chris Holt. And number 80, Jeremiah Abrego. That is one of the most successful senior classes that we have had for a while. And it looks like they may cap it off tonight with a berth to the playoffs. Kickoff is away for the Lions, fielded around the 10 and brought past the 20 to the 23 by number 24 of the Jackrabbits, that is uh, Dylan 
Amundsen on the return. And again, very good pursuit by this Lion kickoff team down there to not allow the 40 Jackrabbits outside the 25 yard line. So, so far for the Greenville Lions, everyone hitting on all cylinders. Outstanding team effort with some exceptional uh, plays by individuals. But again, as they will all tell you, it is a team sport. And the Lions come out on defense here with about seven in the box again. Snap is back, it's a handoff, and wrapped up behind the line, well behind the line by the Lions, is a number one, Zarek Waters, and he is brought down for a huge loss on the play. Jerry, did you see who wrapped him up? I believe the first one in the backfield was Jasper Jensen. Yes. Jasper Jensen throws him down to the ground, does not let him go. Outstanding individual effort there, and several other Lions followed him. So, again, the troubles offensively continue for the 40 Jackrabbits. Well, unfortunately, the Greenville Lions have experienced seasons like the Jackrabbits have Absolutely. all too often and all too recently. This season, things going a little bit better right now. And now, for the first time, we have a whistle before the play. It looks like the Jackrabbits are going to call a timeout with a second and 15 coming up. Of course, the Greenville Lions football team hoping to qualify for the playoffs tonight. As we already mentioned pregame, the Lady Lions varsity volleyball team are the district champs, and they are in the playoffs. They will take on Longview Pine Tree in the first round this coming Monday, November 4th, at Minneola High School. That game will be played at 6.30 in the p.m. So make the trip down 69 to Minneola if you can. Support these Lady Lions. Tickets are only $4 for adults, $3 for students. And uh, we'd love to fill those stands and show a lot of support for the Lady Lions district champs. Now, coming back onto the field after the timeout, we've got the Jackrabbits on offense, Lions on defense. Six minutes, 57 seconds left in the first half, and the Lions have a 28 to nothing lead. Jackrabbits, two wide receivers wide to either side, and an offset eye formation again in the backfield. Anderson fakes the pitch, and it's a handoff again to the fullback, who, just like the last time, finds a huge hole right up the middle and then is undercut by number 25, Jacoby Allen, and taken to the ground, but enough for the first down. That has been the only successful play for the Jackrabbits tonight as they run it twice and both times picked up a large gain on the play. They really have. They ran it in the first quarter from south to north. We're in the second quarter. They run it from north to south, mm -hmm. and that's the entire offense for 40. That's right. Clock continues to run down to 6 minutes and 35 seconds. Four touchdown lead for the Lions. It's a pitch to the running back. Finds a little bit of a hole there on the right side of the line and is able to gain a few. That's number 14, Jalen Phillips, who I believe is the leading rusher for the team. Yes, Phillips has 350 yards on the season. Add a few more there, he picks up around five. And the clock continues to run down on this first half. The Lion Pride Band making their way down onto the track to get ready for their halftime performance. Second down for the Jackrabbits. Anderson rolling out to his left. Now has to retreat to his right as Abrego is in his face. He throws the ball away, out of bounds, and incomplete. And Jerry, you know there's a lot of emotion on this field for the seniors. This will be their last game on this field for the band, the last perform halftime performance in this stadium on uh, Cotton Ford Field. And uh, you can remember your playing days in the last yes. game and how that feels. Absolutely. Yes, yes. Motion's running high, and right now the Lions capitalizing on it. Fake pitch to the tailback. Handoff goes to the half or to the fullback, and the fullback picks up the first down with the gain of six. And that's a trap play. The, the uh, line will have specific blocking schemes that they do on a trap play. And so that, that, that was open, and that seems to have been a, several times they run it tonight. That's, that's their best play, that and the fullback up the middle. Yeah, when, when you're to this point in your career, you think, man, where did this go? You know, you're in high school, you played sports, you enjoyed it, you loved it. Hopefully you had a few winning seasons, and uh, it really gets emotional your last home game. First and 10 for the Jackrabbits at their own 49. Pitch to the tailback, Jalen Phillips. Phillips making his way to the sideline. Gets a gain of five yards there on the carry. And now the Jackrabbits have a little something going on offense that we haven't seen so far. This I formation 
do a little good work for them. And with that play, this is the longest drive play-wise that Forney has had tonight. And they cross midfield down at the Greenville 46. Just some good blocking by the line up front, a little bit of misdirection with the fullback and tailback. Lions only playing one deep safety with, uh, they're backed off a little bit now, but previously been about eight in the box. Now Waters comes in motion and he gets the ball on the handoff and is stripped and it's picked up by Jeremiah Abrego for the scoop and score. He's going to make it to the one to the end zone for a touchdown. And Abrego is celebrating. Outstanding. I don't know who that was. That, that was Tucker it. Moment on the Tucker strip. Moment. Instead of the tackle for the big loss, Moman decided he was going to rip that ball away, and Abrego was right there for the scoop and score. Wow, and these guys have played so hard and been outstanding players all year. You like to see Abrego get something like, like that. He's made so many tackles behind the line of scrimmage and just an outstanding effort by the Greenville Lion defense. And in a few seconds, if Allen connects with this extra point, Dan, the Greenville Lions will be up with five minutes and seven seconds left in the first half against the Forney Jackrabbits, 35 to nothing. And indeed, the extra point is good. And so the Greenville Lions take the big lead, 35 to nothing. We'll be right back using the Lions football on Easy Rock 105.9 KGVL. Thank you. 54 yards. 54. So you scored... Uh, Four touchdowns on offense, one on special teams. Last week there were a couple on special teams, a couple on offense. I'm glad they gave it to him. Yes, yeah, because I thought that knee was down at the one one inch line. I say it's going to be 61 to 7. Welcome back to Lions football. The Greenville Lions really taking care of business tonight on a night that means so much to them, not only because it's senior night, but because they can clinch a spot in the playoffs for the first time in well over a decade. 35 to nothing, your Greenville Lions with the lead over the 40 Jackrabbits with still five minutes to go in the first half. Now, Jerry, we were really hoping for a win, but I'm not sure that even we expected this kind of offensive explosion from the Lions. No, I don't think we I don't think we did at all. And if I'm not mistaken, Dan, I'll look here at the previous games. This is the same uh, Forney team that only lost to Corsicana 7 to 9. Yep. Now Zach Allen with the kickoff. It's away and fielded at the 6 by the Jackrabbits. And the breakaway up the middle is causing some trouble. Zach Allen, a nice job tackling the the runner for the, the return man for the Jackrabbits just across the 50 at the 49, and he may have saved a touchdown there himself. I think you're right. He turned the ball carrier back inside and tripped him up. To, to maybe a touchdown saving tackle there by Allen, who, is, who seems to be very versatile, not just as kicker, but plays other positions on the team. And as we get deeper into the season, next week being the last regular season and regular season game, and as it's looking now, the Lions might play November 14th, 15th, or 16th, and Thursday, Friday, or Saturday, week after next. Zach Allen will be a weapon that will be used in the playoffs should the Lions make them. First and 10 here for the Jackrabbits at the Greenville 48. It's a pitch to number 14, and the entire Jackrabbits line gets behind and pushing him forward, Jalen Phillips with uh, about eight yards on the carry. They're going to mark him down just past the 40. And now there's some celebration on the field. It looks like the Lions stripped the ball away at the end of that run, and the officials are getting together and awarding the ball again to the Greenville Lions. Yeah, I didn't even see what wow. happened there. The, the ball carrier stopped with his forward motion. And there was basically what's called a scrum, a wad of players, if you will, a number of players either pushing the ball carrier forward or for the Lions trying to make the tackle. And someone came out with the ball. And we don't know if the whistle had been blown or not, but there is a there's a conference at the 40-yard line. Right, and we're not sure what the call is, although the Forney offense went off the field and the Greenville defense went off the field, the players seem to be uh, resigned to the fact that it was a turnover but now there's conversation between the officials and both coaches to see uh, what the result of the play will be 
and there seems to be something that is distracting the officials on the south end of the field. The drum line is down there warming up, and now uh, Coach Duke is making his way over there just to ask them to perhaps move out of the way. I'm not sure what the result of the play is still, as the officials have not made a clear indication, and now we see the first down marker is on the field for the Greenville Lions. And there's a stoppage of play here, but you're right. Greenville is going to come out on offense, and it looks like they have been awarded possession of the ball after a a very confusing few moments. See, that's the danger of, of those plays where you're trying to push forward with your whole offensive line behind you, trying to get those extra yards. They're actually holding the player up, and that allowed the Greenville Lions to rip the ball away on defense. And that's a good point, Dan. You want your offensive linemen to help push the ball for carrier forward, and it is legal as long as they do not physically lift him up off of the ground. But uh, you're right. They are holding him up with the defenders pushing back and stripping the ball. And I guess something on the south side of the field caught the officials' attention, and I guess that has been taken care of. And the play clock has started, and we will resume play. Lions offense back on the field. Denson comes in motion, and it's a handoff to Turner up the middle. Turner, a short gain of one on the play, and the clock is at 4 minutes, 45 seconds here in the first half. Greenville Lions with a big 35-0 lead. Get their third turnover of the game on a strip of the ball carrier. Uh, Jalen Phillips for the Jackrabbits gets them the ball back near their own 35-yard line. This time Johnson comes in motion and Johnson takes the handoff on the sweep, makes the first man miss and another shoelace tackle. That's the second time that Johnson has been stopped by a uh, just a one arm reaching out in desperation and is able to trip him up. Otherwise, he was just about to break that one away for a huge gain and possibly a touchdown. Yeah, nice, nice tackle there by whoever outstretched their arm because he was going to be off to the races had they not tripped him up. Third and three for the Lions. And they have the ball spotted at the 44, or their own 42. Excuse me, Brandon Stevens is going to keep this one all the way. He's very close to the first down, and they should give it to him. Yes, they're going to move the sticks on this play. Nice blocking by uh, the line and by Lester Turner. Allows Stevens to pick up just enough for the first. Clock continues to run now down near 3 minutes and 30 seconds in the first half. Lions not slowing down at all, wanting to add on to their 35-0 lead. They approach the line of scrimmage with four wide receivers, three to the wide side, one to the short side. Turner in the backfield. It's a handoff to Turner, met in the backfield, and pushed backwards. This time they're standing Turner up and trying to strip the ball away from him, and he won't allow it. Loss of three on the carry for Turner. Number 30, big number 32, Chase Bird for the visiting Jackrabbits in on that tackle and trying to possibly strip that ball from the ball carrier. So, uh, yeah, Forney turnabout fair play here. They are trying to strip the ball from the Lion offensive players now. So we'll see how that develops, um, tackling versus trying to strip the ball throughout the second half. Second and 12, another off-target snap is fielded by Stevens, rolling out to his right, completes the pass, but minimal gain. It looks like he may have gotten one on that play. The catch is made by... Number 10, Caleb Johnson. Brings up a third and 11 here. A nice play there for the Jackrabbit defense by Caden Cross, a sophomore defensive back, one of 16 sophomores, which is very unusual on a 5A varsity team. A little bit smaller the roster than most of the schools that we've played against this season. Clock now down to two minutes in the first half. Lions a third and 11. Stevens gets the snap, rolling out to his left, looks down the middle, has a man open, and it's complete. I believe that's Sean Brown down the middle. He's all the way to the 15, to the 10, still pushing forward, down to the 7, and whistled dead there. It's going to be a first and goal for the Lions at the 6. Really, wow. really nice pass by Brandon Stevens. Put a little mustard on the ball. Sean Brown just catches the ball, and last four or five yards, he really got all on his own. Mm, that was a little Dijon on that one. 
and the Lions quickly up to the line, hand it off to Lester Turner. Turner able to pick up one before he's pushed backwards. It's going to be a second and goal from the five. Clock rolling down below a minute and a half here in the first half, so the Lions a little bit of expediency on this, maybe just to cash in maybe one more time before a uh, probably wholesale changes on both sides of the ball for the Lions to get some of the other guys a chance, and especially all the seniors, a chance to get in and play some quality time in this game. Second and goal. Stevens keeping this one himself. Stevens out to the right side of the line, picks up a block, and is able to get about uh, two more yards. It looks like it'll be third and goal from the three. Nice play there by number three, Weston Beeman, a defensive back, a senior for the visiting Jackrabbits to turn Stevens back to the inside and not let him get in that end zone. And so I want to pose this to you guys. It's third and goal at the three yard line. Do you do you go in, do you try to go in before halftime with and make it four downs here if you don't make it here on third down? I wouldn't be surprised tonight. Handoff, Lester Turner up the middle. He's met right at the one and trying to push forward is brought down at the one. Fourth and goal from the one with 20 seconds left in the half. We'll see if the Lions call a timeout or just let the clock roll. So far, they're letting it roll. Down to 10 seconds, so we'll see if they want to get another playoff here or they decide to use a timeout, maybe. And a uh, player wisely pulls away Miles Denson, who was jawing at one of the Jackrabbits. Clock all the way down to two. And now, Coach Duke calls a timeout. We'll see what they choose to do here. There's been a lot to cheer about this half, Jerry, and uh, leading the way down there, our cheerleaders and the senior cheerleaders tonight, Katie Duncan, Maddie Ingram, Jaden Moore, and Ashanti Wilson have been doing a great job leading this crowd tonight. And as you said, a lot to cheer about tonight. And and if someone might, uh, well, some of our listeners or some folks in the fans might say, well, hey, it's 35 to nothing. Why did you, why did you call timeout? When you get into district play, and especially you get late in the season and there's playoff implications, one of the tiebreakers is points uh, scored in district games. So we'll see if the Lions here feel like, okay, we do need some extra points in case something happens and we end up, I don't think you will at this point, but in case you ended up in some sort of a tie and you had to go to tiebreakers, the point differential is one of those tiebreakers. But it looks like Zach Allen is on the field, Dan, and he's going to try about an 18-yard field goal. And Jerry, even if they can move from a fourth slot to a third slot in the rankings, that would be big for the Lions. Snap is back, kick is up, and good. So Zach Allen adds three to the total, making it 38 to nothing as the clock expires here at halftime. A huge, huge half for the Greenville Lions uh, and a goose egg on the board for the 40 Jackrabbits. Just what the Lions were looking for uh, on this huge, huge night. Senior night here at T.A. Cotton Ford Stadium. And now we have the bands getting ready to come on the field. We'll be right back with as we continue our interview series at halftime with tonight the interview of the Lady Lions varsity softball team. So we will be right back with that and then come back with the highlight scores and analysis of the first half on this very joyous night right here on Easy Rock 105.9 and AM 1400 KGB. So go uh, about a minute and a half and do the halftime interview in a minute and a half. We usually don't run out of things to say. Uh, not generally. <laughs> How long is that interview? Okay, gotcha. Nine and a half. Gotcha. So, and a minute on each side. Yeah, we'll a minute on each side. We're fine. Okay. Thank you, sir. Wow, look at those bright uniforms. Oh, my word. Oh, my. Woohoo! Ladies and gentlemen, 38. Punch your ticket. Seven for seven. He's not throwing any. He's way past it. Stevens? Wow. How many first downs do we have? Well, not that many. That's, the thing. That's what I was just going to say. It, it's probably less than 10 because eight. No. Yeah. 
Yeah, I mean, it's been the, the long plays. The long all the big plays. Long plays. No yeah. penalties. No penalties. Either side. Yeah. I tell you what. Three turnovers? That was, they wanted that ball that when they stripped it. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, they yeah. Yeah. Jackson. Corey Kirkland. Ronnie Sanchez. And Megan Stone. Thank you. 
field direction of Colonel Jasmine Block, Assistant Flash Director, Ms. Deborah Anderson Hoskins, and Flash Director, Ms. Lori L. Butler. Good evening, and welcome to the Lion Clyde Band's portion of tonight's halftime. Greenville Independent School District is very proud to present the 2019 edition of the Lion Clyde Band. A performance of pride. Tonight, our award-winning band will perform the third movement of the 2019 UIL Contest Show. Step right up. Band student of the week goes to our seniors. We thank you for a great year of making history in the Lion Clyde Band. Drum majors are Ella Walker, Cora Hudgens, and Nancy Huffman.
football this second half ready to begin and the Greenville Lions will be kicking to the Jackrabbits from south to north the Jackrabbits moving from north to south that's left to right and they have a big mountain to climb here as the Jackrabbits are down 38 to nothing the Greenville Lions is hoping to hold on to this 
on a big lead and punch their ticket to the playoffs for the first time in a very long time. Zach Allen out on the field with his cohorts and they have the ball on the tee ready to kick it away. Jack Rabbit's two men back deep right around the 10 yard line. We'll see if uh, Allen kicks it deep or decides to do the pooch kick that they've done so many times this season. We know Allen can get it into the end zone if the conditions are right. He kicks this one deep, it's fielded at the 15 by the Jackrabbits, number 24. We've already seen him have some dangerous concerns, uh, returns, and the ball pops out at the end of that run, and it's pounced upon by the Jackrabbits. They're going to hold on to it. Number 24, Dylan Amundsen with the return. Recovered by Jackrabbits, number 40, Bobby Enriquez, and uh, Amundsen is a little shaken up coming up after that play, but he's going to make his way to the sidelines and the Forney Jackrabbits offense will make their way to the field. And with the size, the size of the Lion roster, uh, as far as numbers go, uh, there may be a, several places where the starters do not necessarily get to rest. We'll see how that works out in the third and the fourth quarter. But right now, it looks like all the starters are back on the field for the Eagles. Snap is back. It's a little high, but handled by Anderson. Handoff to his tailback, pickup of three on the play. Mr. Biltaton, they're all on the tackle yet again. We got a different quarterback, number 12. Yeah, they do. Uh, number 12, Vinny Sulajamani is the quarterback now. And that last run, I believe, was number 22, John Richard Washington. Three wide receivers in the game. Snap is back, handoff to 13, dives forward. Ball comes out at the end of the run and dived on by the Lions. We'll see what the call is. They say it belongs to the Jackrabbits. They're saying the ground caused the fumble. And in fact, the 40 Jackrabbits even get a first, first down, down off that play. Uh, almost a disaster for the Jackrabbits, but they're able to keep uh, possession of the ball. Now they come running to the line quickly as the ball is set. Three wide receivers in the game. Lions crowding line of scrimmage. Suljamani, handoff up the middle. Jack Rabbits with the ball. This time the uh, Lions are ri ripping it again. And Michael Surface ripped it away. It looks like they called him down on forward progress. And that was a ooh, that was a quick whistle because Surface came out of there with the ball very fast. And he was off to the races had the whistle not blown. So it looks like they declared forward progress down. In the wow. That, that, wow. That was about the fastest whistle I've seen on something like that as Surface was trying to get in on the uh, turnover party himself. Wow. Really should have been another turnover, but they'll give him the eight yard carry. And so the Jackrabbits have a second and two. Ball on the Greenville 45 of the, as they've crossed midfield. Man in motion. The handoff to number 22. Washington, and Washington is stopped at the line of scrimmage. By Mr. Grigsby, Dashaun Grigsby, the Greenville sophomore that has played a very, very big role in the defense, uh, on the defensive line this year for the Lions. Tackles with authority and virtually no gain there, maybe even a loss, so third and two for the Jackrabbit offense. And Washington goes off the field, and Nishangong comes in at running back with Sulejmani in at quarterback. They're not making this easy on us, Jerry. Hand off to Nishangyong. And he is right at the first down marker. And they're going to move the chains again. So on third and short, the Jackrabbits convert. And that is their first third down conversion of the night. And that's actually surprising because I see... Not a lot, but some, some decent size on the offensive front for Forney. But uh, the, the skill set belongs to the Greenville Lions tonight. Sulejmani asks for a man to come in motion, and he does. And Sulejmani keeps this one himself and is met behind the line of scrimmage and flung to the ground. Beltaton in on that tackle, takes him for a ride. Big Chris Reyna in there too, and that looks like number 60 again, Dashaun Grigsby. Again, the Lion defense making their presence known to the Jackrabbits. 
Second and 11 after the loss on the quarterback keeper. Eight minutes and 45 seconds left in the third quarter. Jack Rabbits trailing 38 to nothing. Have a cross midfield. Uh, they haven't done that often in this game. A strip by Michael Surface was called a dead ball, otherwise the Lions would have it back. Pressure in the face of Suleimani, and it's an interception. Tyrikus interception by Tyrikus Davis. Davis with blockers in front of him. He's down to the sideline, to the 30, to the 20, 10, 5, and he's tripped up right before the end zone, but they're going to say he's in for the touchdown. Touchdown lines, Tyrikus Davis with another pick six. And that 60-yard interception return by Tyrikus Davis, he comes back. This week, 65 yards, 65 yards, Brent says, on the, top of the interception return. Wow, how was that for an encore in performance? <laughs> the, Davis is an amazing player. And he was playing the ball, guys. There was no pass interference there. He stepped in front, zigzagged a couple of ways, a couple of places, and Zach Allen pulls it just a hair to the left. So the extra point is no good. So with 8.17 left in the third quarter, Greenville Lions 44. Forty Jackrabbits, zero. And so again, I don't think any of us knew that this would get this one-sided, but it is a big celebratory night for the Lions. Sulejmani, as you like to say, Jerry, put some mustard on that pass. Not a bad pass at all. Tyrikus Davis just read the, um, it was a, a slant type pattern, and Davis just read it better than the receiver and got there first. And then the Lions defense all saw the interception happen and turned around and led a convoy down the sideline so that Davis could get into the end zone for the touchdown. And again, the, the woes for the 40 Jackrabbits continue on offense, but again, they have not, there haven't been any um, signs of giving up here for this uh, Jackrabbit team that, uh, impressive uniforms, they look just like the Pittsburgh Steelers, they really do. And as a matter of fact, coming out of the locker room down that many, that was one of their better drives of the night. They were looking good to that point, and even that pass that Sulejmani threw out of his hands, I thought that looked like it was going to be a completion, but Tyrikus Davis is just too good of a player, and he picks it off and takes it to the end zone the other way. Kick is away from Zach Allen, fielded at the five by number 24, Dylan Amundsen. And Amundsen gets it out uh, right near the 30. It looks like they'll probably mark this at the 29. Eight minutes left in the third quarter. Greenville with a 44-0 lead. And uh, I'm sure the North 40 Falcons have checked the scoreboard and this is just breaking their hearts as their postseason chances are dwindling away. Number 12 for the Lions on the kickoff team by Kyle Stewart hitting up just a little slow but made it off on his own power. So glad to see that and we do see wholesale changes on defense now for the Greenville Lions with one deep safety. So some of the names we'll not be as familiar with. We'll look them up and call the name as we see them hand off to number 13, Nishan Nam. And he has a nice carry here on first down. It's gonna They're going to give him 10 and make it a first down run. And number 30, Corey Goudeau for the Lions coming from his near side cornerback spot all the way to the far side to help on the tackle to help clean up some of that on the far side of the field. So lots of players getting good quality playing time tonight. First and 10, Jackrabbits at their own 39. Handoff, Sulejmani to Nishangong. Nishangong running out towards the left sideline. He makes it there and picks up, it looks like about eight on the play. Two nice runs in a row by Dalbert Nishangong. And Nishangong is not, he's not the smallest guy there. He's got a hes got a, a, a little bit of size to him, so there's so a nice run to get to the far side and pick up a nice game. And there seems to be something squeaking up here in the press box. There might be a mouse running around. We'll have to get that out of here. But Nishangong uh, is uh, showing his running skills now as the Horny Jackrabbits have made some changes here on the offense for the second half. Sulejmani rolling out to his right, looking down the field, has a man open, and he overthrew his man. That was uh, number six, Campbell Anderson, who was the, has been the starting quarterback uh, out there at wide receiver. He was wide open, 
and Sulejmani just put it a little bit too high and long. Brings up a third down, two to go for the Jackrabbits. Ball on their own 47. They come quickly to the line. They've got two wide receivers in the game, one to either side. And the offset eye as Sulejmani is under center. Fullback switches to the other side in motion. <clears throat> There's that trap play. Dude. Trap play handoff to the fullback. It's read well by the Lions. This time, instead of letting it go for a gain of around 20, it's only a gain of two. But that looks like it will be enough for a Forney first down. And he just barely got that. So nice job by the defensive line in recognizing the blocking scheme of the Forney Jackrabbit offensive line. And you, because usually what happens is the trap play is just that. You get a player to where he thinks he's wide open to make that tackle, but it's actually a trap and he gets blindsided by one side. So good job there by the defensive line of reading that and keeping the game to the minimum. McMurrin and Anderson out wide to the left. They're the only two receivers in the game. Now Anderson comes in motion. So there's Ronnie handoff to the fullback, number 18. Aaron Mount carries it forward, a gain of six on the play. Nice run by the ball carrier there. Again, a little bit of a trap blocking scheme. And there's a an interesting um, exchange going on from the center to the quarterback in a, a strange motion as he's trying to do some misdirection with the ball. I've never really seen that kind of motion from the quarterback, Jerry. What, what is the intention there is to get the defenders to think he's pitching the ball to the outside when in fact he's turning right back around making a U-turn and handing to the fullback going right down the middle of the field. The quarterbacks for the Jackrabbits do a, a very exaggerated version of that as Tulish Mani does the same thing. This time it's a pitch to number 13, Nishan Gong. Nishan Gong picks up a few more. It's going to bring up a third down and short here. Uh, about two to go. So the Jackrabbits moving the ball more efficiently in this half. This is their uh, third third down this half and each of them have been very short three yards to go two yards to go two yards to go so they've had some success running the ball here with four minutes and 50 seconds left in the third quarter Greenville leading 44 to nothing Sulish Mani takes the snap hands it off to the Shangong the Shangong falls forward just shy of the first down marker it's going to depend on the spot looks to me from up here it was this it's just short and it is so it brings up a fourth down for the Jackrabbits and less than a yard to go and the timing on that play was actually thrown off by a lion no less in the backfield the big number 67 for the Lions uh, Chris Reyna was in the backfield and made a good tackle the ball carrier did did pull him looks like the play clock's down to 10 did pull him a little ways but he didn't stretch forward enough and the play clock's down to five and they're going to get this off. A little confusion from the coaches to the quarterback but they do just get the playoff and this uh, Sulej Mani with the quarterback keeper all the way. QB Sneak gets the first down and a few more across the 40 down to the uh, 37 yard line and the Jackrabbits I believe have penetrated as this is the farthest they've gone in Greenville territory tonight. And Michael Surface and Chris Reyna in on that tackle. But I think you're right, Dan. This is farthest that the Jackrabbits have been in Greenville territory. Still with three minutes and 35 seconds left in the third quarter and a 44 to nothing lead. Nothing to sweat about yet. I formation now for the Jackrabbits. Two wide receivers to the wide side on the left. Selejmani under center pitches the ball to number 22. Finds some running room. First down and more all the way down to the 20-yard line inside the 20. Just John Richard Washington on the carry, and the Jackrabbits are in the red zone. It looks like, I believe that was Darius Ford who made a, he was playing a deep safety for the Lions here. He ran down the ball carrier on the far side. Nice blocking by the Forney offense there, and Forney on the 20-yard line, guys, almost in the red zone here. By far their deepest penetration in the night against the stiff Greenville defense. And Washington almost looked surprised to have that wide of a hole to run through, but he gets a, a very nice gain there on the play. Wide receiver coming in motion as Sulish Mani takes the snap, now rolls out to his right, has to throw the ball away as he was pursued by Michael Surface. 
and it falls incomplete in the end zone. Had that play had some more time to develop, the Jackrabbits may have been in business, but uh, Michael Surface forces the issue. Yeah, a bit of a bootleg action there, and the Lions really had good coverage downfield there. Right, it was supposed to be a naked bootleg where you usually see the quarterback rolling out, and he's the only one on that side of the field, but Michael Surface read that one well all the way. Clock stops with the incomplete pass. It's two minutes, 41 seconds left in the third quarter. And it looks like there may have been a flag on that play. I'm not sure what the call was, but it was, I believe it was declined. And I didn't, didn't, see, the, didn't see the laundry on the field, so I don't know what the call was. Second and 10 for the Jackrabbits. Offset eye with the wide receiver to either side. So Lejmani under center. Sends his fullback in motion and handoff to the fullback. Fullback has some room again. Tucker Moman grabs a hold, and the tackle is finished up by Tyrekus Davis, just shy of the first down marker. And a flag very late on the play. Looks like they're going to get a Greenville Lion for some extracurricular activity after the play was over. Yeah, I don't know, uh, don't know exactly what the call is, but I'm wondering if they are going to call unsportsmanlike conduct for him possibly lifting the player up and then... <laughs> egregiously pushing him down. Indeed, Tyreekus Davis did finish that tackle with authority. I think that that's more of a call to just make sure things don't get out of hand because we've seen uh, much worse than that that uh, went uncalled this season, but I understand why the referees might do that. With that extra penalty yardage, though, the Jackrabbits have a first down inside the 10-yard line. It's going to be first and goal from the six. Watch for the handoff to the fullback as they've been running in. It's a pitch to the tailback. Tailback looking to the outside is wrapped up and tackled by the Lions after a gain of one. And that looked like Jasper Jensen and maybe uh, took a moment in on the tackle for the Greenville defense. And I believe that was Sulish Mani who was the ball carrier. But again, good pursuit to the side, the near sideline by the Greenville defense. Two minutes left in the third quarter. 44 to nothing is the lead, but the Jackrabbits are challenging and threatening to get into the end zone for the first time tonight. So Lijmani under center. And it's a fumble on the play on the the ball still on the ground. Rolling backwards to Lejmani couldn't handle the snap, and I believe that the Jackrabbits have recovered. Tucker Moman right there, scratching and clawing his way for the ball, but the Jackrabbits able to maintain possession. The ball rolls back, however, to the 11-yard line where it's a third and goal from the 11. And Mr. Denson down on the sideline, uh, keeping the legs warm. And uh, he has had a big night already. And so he may be testing some things there just to make sure he doesn't get cramps or anything like that because his speed will be very valuable as the Lions go into, in, a, in two weeks, into the playoffs wherever they play. And Artavian Wilkerson comes into the game as a linebacker. Third and goal from the 12. It's a handoff to Nishangong, and Nishangong is tackled behind the line of scrimmage. Brings up a fourth and goal. They'll give it uh, at the 13, and they are switching teams to the special teams unit. Looks like they're going to try for a field goal. 15 play drive. And a nice job by the Lions offense there in the red zone to keep them out of the end zone. Ball will be spotted about the 19, so it's a 29-yard field goal from the far hash. Snap is back. The kick is up. And the kick is good for the Jackrabbits. So the Jackrabbits put their first points on the board with 20 seconds to go in the third quarter. 44-3, to the Greenville Lions with the lead as we are nearing the fourth quarter. We'll stay with the action here until the 22nd rolls off the clock, then take a break at the quarter. And that was by far the longest drive that the 40 Jackrabbits have mounted tonight, spanning seven minutes and 40 seconds and 15 plays. So an impressive drive there by the 40 Jackrabbits getting things back on track and getting three points as the Dan said, the 20 seconds left here in the third quarter and the Greenville Lions will have just the fourth quarter to play to solidify their place in the 2019 playoffs from District 8-5-8. 
Great Bull Lions kicking unit comes out onto the field. Kick return unit, I should say. And uh, back deep, there's number three, Miles Denson. And it looks like number 10, Caleb Johnson, with him. And we'll see here if the Jackrabbits uh, think onside kick. But uh, right now, it looks like they're going to try to kick it away. And he approaches the ball at the 40, kicks it away. It's a pooch kick fielded by Sean Brown near the 25, gets away from the first tackler up to the 35 where he's brought down after a right around a 10 yard return. Took six more seconds off the clock, 14 seconds left in the third quarter. Greenville Lions with a 44-3 lead. The 40 Jackrabbits with their first score of the night, a field goal on their last possession. And we'll see here if the Lion offense follows suit to the Lion defense with uh, the most of the starters sitting down. So I do see a lot of new, new numbers on the field for the offense for the Lions. And it looks like Lester Turner is still in the backfield. But uh, Dan, we'll see who some of these new faces are. Pass intended for Caleb Johnson is too far out in front of him, and actually the closest one to the ball is Jed Smith, the defensive back for the Jackrabbits, brings up a second down and 10 on the incompletion. And that's Brandon Stevens' first incompletion of the night, I think. That is correct, Eric. So Stevens and Turner in with the offensive group now with some new faces. Mr. Denson comes in at a slot receiver on the near side. And it's a handoff to Turner. Turner wrapped up in the backfield and brought down. That's a big tackle for the Jackrabbits. Number 34, Chase Bird brings him down. Brings up a third down and long for the uh, Greenville Lions as the time runs out in the third quarter. We'll see what they're able to do when we come back. Go to the Lions football on Easy Rock 105.9 and AM 1400 KGVO. And here comes that third and 15 play. Two wide receivers flanking Brandon Stevens, one to either side. It's a fake to Lester Turner. Looking over the middle, complete to Sean Brown. About a six inches shy of the first down marker. Nice catch by Sean as he went down. Sean's a big guy, maybe 6'3", six, 6'2". Six, he went down to get that ball. Brandon was waiting for the... Uh, the traffic over the middle to clear out and Sean found, found a good place to just sit down in the route and, and get there and it looks as if they're going to go for it with, again, as you said, Dan, just a few inches to go. Here we go. Lions, student body straight ahead and uh, Brandon Stevens keeps the ball for a first down. That big line just pushing forward and they won the battle, getting low and Brandon Stevens able to run forward and uh, pick up that first. Keeps the clock running, keeps the ball in Greenville's hands. Number 64, Steve Lewis up there on the offensive line. Looks like uh, number 51, Daniel Jimenez in there tonight. Looks like also number 73, Sam Martin getting some time. And number 70, Alex Rodriguez. So lots of folks getting playing time here. Here tonight in Greenville on senior night. Denson in motion. Stevens fakes the handoff to Denson and gives it to Lester Turner and said, Turner up the middle. A nice run by Turner here. Picks up, uh, looks like eight yards there on that carry. Lester adding to his 1,000 plus yard total. Has a good night tonight. And again, so far, everyone doing so well offensively, defensively, special teams. So a big, big night for the Greenville Lions on the scoreboard. Greenville with the lead, 44 to three. Stevens takes the snap and keeps this one all the way, running off tackle up the right side and gets the first down and more inside the 40, inside the 40 or 35, down to the 33 on the Jackrabbit side of the field. And Brendan using his legs there all the way, as you said, Dan. The call, the call. He uh, there was no no thought of a pass there. So we'll see how long the coaches lead Brandon in and possibly bring in Josh Luna to get him some quality uh, repetitions. Four wide receivers in the game. Caleb Johnson in the slot. Stevens keeping the ball all the way. It's uh, well blocked out to his left, making his way towards the sideline. 
pickup of nine for Brandon Stevens on the carry. And that looked like number 16, I'm not sure, on the far side, Jaquez Davis making very good blocks out front. But correct me if I'm wrong, Dan, because there was some good blocking going on out there. That was. And uh, now Jaquez comes off the field a, a little bit gimpy on that side. I can't tell if he's favoring the leg or the shoulder. But uh, he'll get a sub in for him. Caleb Johnson back on the field. Denson in the slot on the right side with uh, Sean Brown out wide on the numbers. Lester Turner helping Brandon Stevens out with an equipment problem. And now Lester gets the handoff, wow. leaps over wow. a man who's in his way and gets the first down and more, pushing forward inside the 20, inside the 15, down to the 13-yard line. Whoa. That's an appropriate call there, Dan. You know who leaps and bounds, the guy with the S on his chest. And Lester Turner looked just like that at that time as he continues to pile up the yards with this 1,000-yard season. Clock keeps running. Eight minutes and 50 seconds left in the game. 44-3 to the lead for the Greenville Lions. Hand off to Turner. This time he's wrapped up by the ankle at the line of scrimmage and is only able to fall forward for one. Looks like a little bit of some chippiness going down there on the field as Miles Denson is trying to carry out a block and the uh, Jackrabbit did not approve. Yeah, that was Mr. Lucium for the Jackrabbits. And number four for the white uh, clad team and number three for the men in black and red, the home team. There was a disagreement there and they <laughs> carried that well past the, uh, but if there was there was, there was no ill refute at the end. No, Denson let it go. He knew that this is not the time to get in trouble. Brandon Stevens fields a low snap and keeps it himself right up the middle. Picks up another three yards. He's going to be inside the 10, down to the 9. Third down from the 9. The Lions can still get a first down right around the three-yard line. And a nice stop there by the Jack Rabbit. He put several Jack Rabbits in on the, the tackle there. Again, bringing up third down for the Lions as the clock rolls down to about seven and a half minutes left in this game. Seven yards to go for the first down. Snap is picked up off the turf. Pass is complete. Looks like Miles Denson gets the ball. He falls hard, breaks away from the from the tackler and into the end zone for the touchdown. Miles Denson, I believe that's his third on the day, at least his second, and he would not be denied. That is his third touchdown, three touchdowns for number three. Uh, he caught that ball and was wrapped up and got away from the tackler into the end zone for another six points. And I believe Miles is going to get flagged 15 yards for a very brief and short celebration in the end zone. I don't know that it was directed toward anyone, but the flag came flying in. And so I believe on the kickoff, <laughs> we're probably going to see some yardage assessed for... I don't think you would ever call that excessive, but there is there is an unsportsmanlike conduct flag on the Green Bull. Well, as, as we've mentioned, Miles has been uh, in the middle of a few little spats on the field. They've uh, while the, whether he's been targeted or whether he's been the instigator, uh, he's been wrapped up with number three and number four for the Jackrabbits on a couple plays, and there'll be a flag on this one. Looks like it will be assessed on the kickoff. And now there's flags on the extra point try before the snap. And I will say this. The side judge on the far side made a quite a nice long throw with the flag when he assessed that penalty on Miles in the end zone. That flag was thrown a good 20 yards, and it was quite a nice fire. And Jerry, we're having uh, some trouble down here on the track where the JROTC members do push-ups for every point scored. Wow. They're giving them a workout tonight. He's still trying to get his 50 push-ups in as this extra point is up and good. And he's going to have to add one more to make it official. And he is exhausted on that uh, platform that they're holding him up on. They're going to help him out with these last couple as they begin to lift the platform and help him out. He got his 51 in. Greenville Lions with a 51-3 lead. Seven minutes and 25 seconds left in this game. We'll be right back with the kickoff to the 40 Jackrabbits. This is the Lions football on Easy Rock, 105.9 KGBL. Wow, what a touchdown. Boom. 
Yeah. I mean, that, I thought he was going to be stopped short too. I mean, that's what you call fight. Yeah. He had three guys on him. And I don't know what little motions he made back there at the back. Of the I, my head was down. Yeah, it was just some little something, whatever. I think he may have said something. <laughs> yes. Congratulatory remarks, I'm sure. <laughs> Welcome back to Lions football. We are in the middle of the fourth quarter here, and the Greenville Lions are in the middle of a route. 51-3 to three over the Forney Jackrabbits. And should this score hold up, and it's looking like it's going to, the Greenville Lions are going to have quite a celebration going on after this game as they will <laughs> qualify for the playoffs for the first time since 2003. And I think this game and this score and the performance tonight, uh, it just accentuates and probably puts an exclamation point on their feelings of, okay, we have made it. And you can feel the anticipation in this crowd with the, the cheerleaders and the flaming slashes and the band and the, and the uh, spectators. You can feel it all throughout the stadium. They are ready to break loose here. Kickoff is away, fielded by the Jackrabbits right at the 20-yard line. The return is coming, and an unblocked Lion gets down the field and brings him down at the 33. A nice tackle. Let's see if we can see that number there. That looks like number 18, Kenton Anderson, on the tackle. A nice open field tackle. That's hard to do. Yeah, because Zach Allen had to kick off on the Greenville 25, and the ball was fielded, I believe, on the fly at the 20. So a nice kickoff from Allen after the penalty was assessed on Greenville. Very good. Seven minutes, 19 seconds left to go in this game. Greenville with a big lead, 51-3. Jack Rabbit's offense back onto the field. They've got two wide receivers wide to the left. That's the wide side of the field. Offset eye. It's fumble on the snap again. Picked up off the ground by Sulejmani. Sulejmani completes the pass. This one to number six, Campbell Anderson, the former quarterback. And Anderson gets a nice gain of eight on that play that could have been disastrous for the Jack Rabbits. Nice job by the quarterback there, keeping his composure and, and having the presence of mind to get the ball out to Anderson with a very decent seven or eight yard game. And this change at quarterback from Anderson to Sulejmani has uh, been a very good uh, call for the uh, Jackrabbits to this point. Maybe they're just trying to let Sulejmani get some uh, playing time as this is his uh, uh, one of his last games as a senior as well, but to this point in the season, he was only two for two. Yeah, they have four quarterbacks, two of which played tonight, uh, one of the other ones is a senior, and then the, yet the fourth one is a sophomore. So there's Mania pitch to Nishangong. Nishangong wrapped up behind the line of scrimmage and taken down. We have to give this credit to uh, the a Lion who was being blocked and reached out with one arm, held Nishangong, back until his cohorts could meet him there and make the tackle. That's number 59 uh, on the tackle, Elijah Wolford. Nice job by him of uh, not letting go of that. And Beltaton still in there on defense for the Lions, was back there with a couple of Lions in the back. Was a really good pursuit there by the defense. That was either 59 or 53, Christian Portillo. So Wolford or Portillo on that tackle, or at least half a tackle. For, Clock still running down to 5 minutes and 35 seconds. Greenville with a 51-3 lead. Pass over the middle. Incomplete. Intended for number 81, Brendan Marks. A little bit too far in front of him. Nice pass over the middle, and as you said, it was just past his outstretched arms. So on that third and eight, falls incomplete. Brings up a fourth down, and the punt unit comes on the field. And again, not an undersized 20 team by any means just a lot of things going on and not necessarily going right for them tonight and throughout the season. Perhaps the Greenville Lions just hitting their stride at just the right time. Which that will be our hope anyway. Nice punt. As uh, they still have a game next week against the division leading Ennis Lions. We'll be making that trip down to Ennis and see how the Lions fare against another playoff bound team. The Ennis Lions at that point should have first place locked up. up. Absolutely, yes. And so we don't know if they'll be playing their full complement of players or not. Yeah, it's like the guys on Sundays when you get to the, about the 15th or 16th week. Okay, what starters are going to rest and which team has to, to play everybody just to try to make that playoff. So it's the same scenario here. We'll see if Ennis next week plays those starters 
or how they come at the ball game as the Greenville Lions will be playing their last regular season game. But as we can say in about five minutes and 23 seconds, that will be just before their first playoff game in more than a decade. Handoff. This one looks like it's number 15. Dartavian, Dartavian Wilkerson in the game at uh, running back, and he picks up first down for the Greenville Lions. And how many big plays did he come up with several games ago uh, for the Lion offense, especially here at home? Mm -hmm. Lots and lots of Lions contributing this year. There's really a lot of talent on both sides of the ball, a lot of speed on this team on both sides of the ball. Uh, it'll be interesting to see how they do against Ennis and, and in the first round of the playoffs. Flags on the play. Got a little movement by the left tackle maybe on the far side, so that might be a decision. A few more uh, substitutes have entered the game for the Lions, including uh, number five, Josh Luna, in at quarterback. And Dartavian Wilkerson, as we mentioned, at running back. Looks like I even see, and I think I see Degarius Ford out there on offense. Kenton Anderson in at wide receiver. He has been an excellent, excellent defensive back all year, and he's getting his chance on offense right now. Luna takes the snap, handoff to Dartavian Wilkerson. Wilkerson gets away from the tackle, makes his way to the sidelines. First down, past the 40, down into the 45. Looks like they'll mark him right around the 47-yard line there. That's about a 16-yard run, but dynamic runner there, guys. Very, very shifty. And look for him in the playoff game that the Lions are going to secure in 4 minutes and 14 seconds. Look for him possibly to play a big part as film will have been watched on the rest of the Lions. Wilkerson might be a really, really good player there in the playoffs as no one has seen him near as much. 51-3, Lions with the lead. Now a handoff to Wilkerson. Goes nowhere. He, that is blown up in the backfield. Uh, looks like big number 50 for the for the Jackrabbits. That's Micah Owens, a senior lineman. Does not let uh, Wilkerson get away this time. Brings up a second and 15. Clock continues to roll now down to 3 minutes and 35 seconds left in the game. There's about to be a big celebration breaking out here, my friends. And again, penetration by the Jackrabbit defense into the Lion backfield as the ball carrier. And I don't know if that's Wilkerson again. Taken down about a two-yard loss at the 40-yard line of the Lions. And that'll be an official's timeout on the field as we have a Lion down on the field about the 46-yard line. And that'll bring up third and about 17 for the Lions. And as the staff goes out to check on our injured Lion, there is a timeout on the field. Yeah, and we'll take a quick break here as they check him out. You're listening to Lions Football on Easy Rock 105.9 and AM 1400 KGBO. Thank you. Give us 30. 79. No, run, an run another one. Oh, that's big Chris Holt. We don't need him. Is he a starter? Yes. Dakota, oh. is, is it a problem if we go later tonight, or do you have to get right back to the schedule? I can go right now. Welcome back. As our injured line makes his way off the field under his own power, I think he's going to be all right. Third down and 15 for the Greenville Lions with three minutes and 20 seconds left in the game. Greenville Lions a huge lead, 51-3. to three. They are going to be playoff bound here in just a couple of minutes. Luna rolling out to his left. Tries for Kenton Anderson. And Anderson, unable to keep the handle on that ball, drops it. It's going to bring up a fourth and 15. And looks like the Lions will punt it away. So three minutes and eight seconds left until the Lions can say they are in the playoffs next week. Travel with us down to the south central, the north central part of Texas to Ennis. And if you can't be there in person, listen to it online. Easy Rock 105.9 as Allen gets the punt away. Bounces, takes the favorable Greenville bounce. Out of bounds at the 20-yard line. So he'll get credit for about a 38-yard punt. But very effective, no return. And, of course, if you can't listen on the radio, you can stream us live on the Internet, eradiokgbl.com, 
or get the TuneIn Radio app on your smartphone and just search for KGVL and you'll find us there as well. Many ways to listen. Of course, we hope that uh, many will join us down in Ennis as well. Three minutes and one second left in this game, gentlemen. There's 51 to three on the scoreboard. Greenville Lions with a huge lead. And uh, three timeouts left for either team. I doubt that those will be used. Jackrabbits with the ball on their own 20. Looks like Sulejmani still in at quarterback. He hands the ball off to his running back. That's Washington with a big carry. First down and more. Very nice run. Across the 35 to the 37. Clock continues to run. The ball on the 40, 37 yard line. Two minutes and 45 seconds till the end of this one. And the Greenville Lions will claim a W tonight. Punch their ticket to the playoffs week after next. Snap the ball. Ball handed to the ball carrier, and he is snuffed right there by the Lion defense. Nice play by several Lions there on first down as Forney is held to basically one yard game. Two minutes and 15 seconds left in the game. This has been a day that has been long awaited. Brent, as you mentioned, you lived here 15 years. I've lived here for 12 years, and you, we are about to see something that we have not seen since we lived here, and that's the Greenville Lions making the playoffs. Minute 55, clock is ticking down. Sulejmani, pitch to Washington. Washington, read well by the Greenville defense, and he is brought down behind the line of scrimmage. A big loss of about five there on the play. A third down and 13 to go. I believe that was Jacques Davis again on the far side. Possibly. That might have been Kenton Anderson who made that tackle. But good job by which, whoever that was on the far side there to keep the ball clear uh, from getting outside and actually a loss on the play. That'll bring up third and 13. And the announcement has been made that the Greenville Lions with the win tonight will clinch a playoff spot. And you hear the crowd in the background. And they have been waiting as well. Sulejmani rolling out to his to his left. Now he's going to be just chased out of bounds. And very good pursuit there by the Lion defense as the quarterback rolled out to the to the near side, especially, let me hook here, Justin Lyman, number 47, or Justin Limo, number 47. Absolute outstanding pursuit. The quarterback all the way to the sideline, coming from the far side of his defensive position. The clock stopped because the play ended out of bounds. 55 seconds left in the game. Sulejmani fakes the handoff, rolls out to his right, overthrows a man. It's going to be incomplete as Sulejmani is hit hard right as he's throwing it. Incomplete on the fourth down play. The Greenville Lions take over on downs, and all they have to do is take a knee or two, and this game will be theirs. There is excitement on the sideline. The players starting to jump around. The band is playing. And the coaches are beginning to celebrate as well. The fans making their way down towards the railings. You may see a few of these fans out on the field. And Jerry, you and I have been uh, in this booth now for quite a few years watching these Lions too. And this is just a very exciting night for the Greenville Lions. Very exciting night for the Greenville Lions as the offense comes out more than likely down the ball. And a couple of times the play clock will, will run and uh, the celebration will begin. Long dry spout, uh, dry spell for the Lions and for all of those former Lion football players that uh, that survived and, and went through the early 40 <laughs> over a four year period there at one point. And Coach Duke gets the, either the water or the Gatorade bath right there on the 35 yard line and 23 seconds and the clock is running. That there will won't be, need to be another staff. The end of the game and the Greenville Lions for the first time 
since 2003 are headed to the playoffs. And there is a celebration, and the fans are coming out of the stands onto the field. It's great to see young men successful in this, and all of the people that support the flashes, the fan, the cheerleaders, all the ROTC, everyone comes into the fold here to celebrate just an outstanding job by the staff and the seniors of this community for supporting their team. The Lions are in the playoffs, and it's the big step for the entire program, and not just football. It's Greenville Athletics, as we've said. This video has been brought to you by Juice 34. Juice is your community-owned provider for electric, internet, cable TV, and true local programming.